Now let's take a look at some of the basic operations with the LabVIEW Math Script window. Go up to the menu, select Tools, and then Math Script window. After it's done initializing, you'll see a prompt that says how to get some help. You can type Help Classes, and this gives you a broad overview of all the capabilities of the Math Script language. See that we have advanced math functions, data acquisition, matrices, set operators, all sorts of things in there. You can also search using the index and other tabs for searching. Down here we have the interactive command window. Over here you can enter the script and save that as a file, and you can also look at the history of your commands. Let's get started with just a very simple calculator. For example, this is 1 plus 2, and I get the answer 3. MathScript is a programming language. We can set a variable a to a constant value 1, set the variable b to 2, and then we can write c equals a plus b. Notice that in each case, we see the answer being echoed out. You can suppress the output, which is especially helpful when you're writing scripts with a semicolon. Notice that all of the variables that you've created are showing up over here. You can see their data type, and in some cases, you can actually see the data value. Here's how you enter an array. You use square brackets to enclose the array elements. We see that echoed back. You can also use the up and down arrow to recall previous commands. In this case, I've scrolled back up, and now I want to try entering a apostrophe, and that's the transpose operation from matrix calculations. We see a subtle difference there in terms of how the transpose appears. Now, when you use the asterisk for multiply, mass script understands that to mean matrix multiplication. And I can make that work if I get my array dimensions properly put together. A transpose times A gives me a square matrix like this. Up here you'll notice that now it's being abbreviated, it tells us it's a 4x4 four four array. We can see the details down here as well. If I do A times A transpose, then I just get a scalar result. So star all by itself, that's matrix multiply. Now we can do array style multiplication by placing a period in front of the asterisk. This multiplies each element of the vector together. Here's another example. I could divide each element by the other, and in this case that would just give us an array of ones. Now when you add a scalar to a vector, you don't need to do anything special. A plus 5 adds the value 5 to each of the array elements. Let's move on to some other ideas. Print Working Directory shows you where you are located in the file system. You can change your directory location using CD for change directory. We need to use a string to specify where we are going, and strings are enclosed in the apostrophe. I've already created a folder on my C drive called LabVIEW to print working directory again, and it tells me that I'm successfully in that folder called LabVIEW. You can list the files and folders in your directory using DIR for directory. Now let me create the beginnings of a script up here. This is where I want to save a collection of math script functions that I can uh, run repeatedly. Typing in a little bit of math script code here, I'll save that. And I get a prompt for a file name, and I want that to end up in my LabVIEW folder. I'll type C LabVIEW, and to give this a name, I'll call it demo.m, and uh, .m means a math script file. 
Let me come back here and do a quick check of the directory contents, and there we see demo.m has just been created. All right, let me add a little bit more here. Let me create another variable d. This will be array style multiplication of c times itself. Add in the scalar 2, and again using semicolon to suppress the output. Click the green arrow to run your script. And because I've got a semicolon on every single line, I don't see any evidence of it back in the output window. Let's try it this way. Okay, now I can see the results of the calculation for variable D. Look back here and you can see the current list of variables and their values. You can also use the who command to see what variables you've created. Who with an S, meaning who with sizes, shows you more details. Here when I type capital A, it says I don't know what variable that, that is. So this, this demonstrates that the variable names are case sensitive. Little a is different than capital A. Now let's come back to the script and I want to demonstrate a couple other features. Here I'm creating an array of values ranging from 0 to 1 with a step size of 0 0.01. Now I'm typing y equals sine of 2 times pi times 10 times t. And this will evaluate the sine function over all the elements of the time vector t. I'll save that script and then run the script. To visualize the output, I can use the plot function. I note that y is uh, an array of 101 elements in size. So I will plot t comma y and that uses time as the independent variable. Looks like a nice sinusoid, perhaps a little bit on the gran granular side. Let me increase the resolution here a bit by increasing or decreasing rather the step size to 0 0.001. run the script, and the plot shows a much smoother curve for the sine wave. We can dress up the plot here a little bit. Let me first include that plot command inside the script, and then I can give a label to the x-axis, and then a label to the y-axis, and then give a title to the entire plot. Save that and run it. And we see our title and the Y and X axis labels shows up very nicely. All right, let's finish up by taking one last look at the help feature. Here I have typed help sign to get more details on the sign function. Next, I'll click on the owning class, which is trigonometric in this case. And here I can see all of the related functions. You can easily navigate the help system in this fashion to find out more useful functions. Well, hopefully that gives you a good start on using the MathScript window.